Hi, this is Simon from HomeKit News, and today we cast our eye over the long-awaited KuGeek A1W Environment Monitor, a multi-sensor device to keep check on your air quality and more in your home. Keep watching to see if it was worth the wait. So here we've got the latest device from KuGeek, although it's actually been listed since last year. And as you can see, this is HomeKit compatible, although there's no mention of Amazon or Google integration at this time. A quick look on the side of the box gives you a quick idea of the different types of sensors this device contains, which are ambient light, sound, PM 2.5 and PM 10, temperature, humidity, motion, plus a built-in nightlight. That sounds quite impressive in theory, and it certainly got me interested to see if it could do what it says on the packet, so to speak. So onto the unboxing, and you can see right away that this is nicely packaged using very dense impact resistant foam. The first thing you see, of course, is the device itself, which already looks great, although it'd look amazing if it had a larger screen, obviously. So underneath we find more foam packaging with the instruction manual, which includes a HomeKit code and provides instructions in six languages. Underneath is a USB to micro USB cable and a small USB power supply, in this case a Type-A 2-pin North American plug. You're more than likely to be able to use any USB power supply though. Now although this device does come with a power supply, it does have an internal battery, so it can be placed in locations for short periods where there may not be a power outlet nearby. In this case the battery was a little bit too low for me to boot it up straight out of the box. Having a quick look at the back of the device, and you can see that it has another copy of the HomeKit code, along with a micro USB port for charging and a small kickstand. On to the installation now, which I'm doing directly via the Home app. And as is always the case, you simply add a device and then you scan the code and wait for it to pair. Now this can take a little bit of time and can occasionally fail, which can happen to any HomeKit device, but in this case I'm happy to report that it worked first time. Once the device has been successfully added, you then go through naming each of the separate sensors if you so wish to something more easy for you to remember. I should point out that as you can see on the screen, there are six separate devices listed, although the sound sensor isn't supported by HomeKit at this time, so the sixth device in this case is actually the night light. Whilst you're naming these devices, you can of course choose a room for them to be in and from there decide whether each of the separate sensors are to be included as a favourite. Your favourite devices appear on the main screen of the Home app. I've included all of the sub-devices as favourites and as you can see from my home screen here, I'm able to also turn the night light on and off with the separate tile. With everything added to the home app and with the device itself powered up, you can then see the screen itself with a ton of little icons representing different readings, with the main central one being either temperature or as I've got set up here, the PM 2.5 level. All the other readings for the sensors are shown on the screen, either on the top or the bottom, along with Wi-Fi status, a 24 hour clock and the battery level for the device also shown. Below the screen on the front is a multifunction button that when pressed allows the main number display on the screen to switch between PM 2.5 or temperature. Above the main screen you have three separate sensors, sound, motion and light. Going back to the button on the bottom and as already mentioned with a quick tap you can switch between the numbers for PM 2.5 and temperature but a long press also allows you to access various language, temperature and motion settings, along with a couple of extra functions that utilise the nightlight, one of them being the smart wake function and the other one relating to ambient light sensing. As a quick test to see if the PM 2.5 sensor would react as designed, I lit a few matches and then let them go out there by creating smoke that should trigger the sensor. Now as you can see here the PM 2.5 numbers rise fairly quickly along with the nightlight changing colours to reflect the amount of particulates in the air. So that definitely works. The other sensors that tend to work on the fly are motion, sound and ambient light and they also change dynamically rather fast unlike temperature and humidity which generally take a little longer to change. 
Now this is just an overview of the product and there really isn't that much time to go over every single aspect of the device. But if you want to know how well it fares in general, head over to homekitnews.com where you can read the full unbiased review. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.